Number three. Lexio Divina has to do with what God is asking of me, calling me to do. It's about a conversation about today. Number four, it's about what is happening today. It's about reality. It's not about some pipe dream. It's about reality and the, the present time. And it's not about some future vocation. <coughs> you can use it for that, but it's, that's not what it's intended for. Because it's a conversation with a spouse. It's a conversation with someone you love. It's a conversation with... Um, about the events of the day. One of the things about reading love letters from a spouse is it's gratuitous. It really accomplishes nothing. You're not getting anything done. You're not finishing a project. You're not, it's, a, it's about being. It's not about doing. It involves the spending of time maybe even the wasting of time. It's not about finishing something. It's not, not about doing something. It's about who we are. And it's about who we are in relationship with, with the divine. That's the... See, Benedict the Sixteenth. Um, if you have a, a chance, <clears throat> go onto the Vatican website and look for Benedict XVI and all of his homilies. And um, when he um, retired, as it were, someone suggested to me that I read his homilies on the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord, because in his pontificate he had seven of those. So I printed them out, put them in, a, stapled them together, and read them over a period of time. It's a theology of baptism that has stayed with me ever since. And I've used this in homilies because he very, very succinctly explains in Lexio Divina fashion what the text means. So, in Greek, it's, it's eis to anoma, in the name of the Father. Not en to anoma, which is in the name of the Father. Because in English we don't have any difference, but in Greek we do. So, entonoma means that in the name of the Father, like in the name of, uh, say for example, uh, we have a senator. We do have a senator, uh, Feinstein. She legislates in the name of the people of California. Not well. But she, she does. <laughs> but there's a separation of some 5,000 miles. That's not what eistonoma means. Eistonoma means that by virtue of our baptism, in the name of the Father, we've been placed inside the Trinity. That we've been immersed inside the mystery of God. So, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit means that each of you who are baptized, you, you live in a spiritual world and God is around you all the time. God is not absent. You don't have to go looking for Him. He's here. You just have to say, Hi. And that's what Lexio is doing. You're speaking his word. It's rolling around your lips. It's becoming part of you. And you are becoming part of this mystery that becomes um, the experience of being inside God. Okay. Let's see. Six. 
five? No, not five. Yeah, five. Five. five is it's it's gratuitous. It accomplishes nothing. It's about being, not doing. It's all spending time, wasting time. Six. It's for the body as well as the mind. So, getting out of bed, putting two feet on the floor, making the sign of the cross, remembering the word you read the night before, and rolling around your lips and your mind, sitting up straight, getting up, heading into the bathroom, you know, seize the day. Uh, it's, it has everything to do with your attitude you know, you're not slouching, you're not laying down, you're not getting back into bed, you're not... It has to do with what, what you do with your body, too. Um, there was a, a list of things that I said... Yeah, that you don't do first thing in the morning. You don't check Facebook, you don't check your computer, you don't turn on TV, you don't turn on the radio. I developed that idea when I lived with my grandmother for a weekend. <laughs> I was music director of a church in Peoria, Illinois, and Grandma lived just south of us. And so I got to see her. I was living in Illinois at the time, and Grandma had been, you know, I was living in California, and Grandma had been in Illinois, but now I was working in Peoria, and Grandma lived about 30 miles away, and I got to visit her. So I went and spent weekends with her, and this is what she did when she got up in the morning. She turned on the television set, and the television set was on all day long. It made noise, you know, because she lived alone and she liked company. But see, that, that meant she wasn't living in a spiritual world, that she had company, not just noise coming out of the television. Mm -hmm. The other thing is um, making a pot of coffee. It's a mundane thing. It connects us to the world, but Fulton J. Sheen, a venerable archbishop, sh should be blessed by now, said that no man can pray confidently in the morning without a cup of coffee. <laughs> and so I'll give you that. You can make a pot of coffee. <laughs> I have a coffee pot in my bathroom. <laughs> Before I shave, of course, I don't do it, do it anymore. I uh, coffee. bought a coffee. It's done by the time I get out of the shower. <laughs> So, let's see, number seven. Write it down if it helps. Mm -hmm. Keep a journal, or you know, if it helps you remember it, if it helps you to come back to it, write it down. There are seven movements in Lexio Divina. I'm gonna start with the seventh. So seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, seven. Colazio. C-O-L-L-A-T-I-O, -L -L -O, Colazio. These are the Latin terms. Because we often start with, with these. Colazio means fellowship, sharing with one another. It's probably the longest it's probably the longest thing that it that you spend time on. Once you get in the habit of reading the scriptures as lexio, it's you don't keep it to yourself. You share it with other people. It has the ability to to create this ambiance of fellowship. Mm. Number six. Seven, six. Axio. A C T I O. These are the Latin phrases because 
Latin is the Catholic language, and this is what the language was when this was put together. And this is ancient stuff. This is what was written down in the 6th and 5th century. Axio, putting the word into practice. It has something to do with what you do. It has everything to do with how you're converted into this action. Axio. And that takes time. Mm -hmm. Number five. <coughs> Contemplatio. C-O-N-T-E-M-P-L-A-T-I-O. Contemplatio. It's seeing the world differently. It's contemplation. Contemplating. What? Said con contemplating. Contemplating. Yeah, but 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 it's you're seeing the world differently because of this word, because of these experiences of the word. Number four is oratio. That's the conversation. It's. You repeat the word. You ask him some questions about the word. You listen for his answer. That takes a bit of time. Number three, meditatio, meditation. This is when you roll it around your lips and roll it around your mind. And number two is Lexio. That's opening the book and reading. Lexio. L E C T I O. Lexio. Number one is the hardest thing to do. Starting. And that's statio, S-T-A-T-I-O, statio. That's being who you are when you read. It's, it's the, your station in life. It's what's going on now. See, oftentimes when we pray, we pray about the world, we pray about what's going on in Washington, we pray what, what's going on in Sacramento, we pray... Uh, on all these levels, because they're the most disturbing to us. And, um, but statio is the argument you had with your spouse the day before. Statio is you're disciplining your kids. Statio is you've got nothing left in your bank account, you had to go grocery shopping. Statio is what's going on. The station in life, what's happening here and now. And that's the shortest uh, thing you do, because it can't be 3,000 things at once. It doesn't take a lot of time to figure out your station. But if you forget that, you're not being real. 